Um, thank you for having me here today. I, I thought I'd present a very specific site example of um, LID, which is the capture and reuse element. Um, when implementing LID, as you all are aware, there's the hierarchy of possibilities with the first tier being infiltration. Um, infiltration is ideally uh, the perfect solution, but many times it, it brings up difficulties that um, capture and reuse support. So um, I worked on a project recently in the city of Santa Monica, the Pico Branch Library. It's a municipal project, it, um, and we actually implemented a stormwater cistern, and we're recycling the stormwater for toilet flushing. And I think uh, Mark brought up a good point. It's actually not reuse in this case, it's use. And, and so an interpretation of the regulations in this complicated state make it feasible on larger projects. Um, so there are a number of elements in a stormwater capture and use system, the first being the pretreatment, which we just skipped past. Um, and so if a well-planned system doesn't really require much pretreatment, um, but it is important to keep the solids from accumulating in the tank. It, we want the tank to store water rather than um, silt. And so you saw, I'd, I'd like to go back. I'm making the same mistake that other people did, so I'll just not touch anything. <laughs> um, if we could go back two slides in your mind. Um, we typically use fiberglass reinforced plastic tanks, which are not the most environmentally sustainable, but they are um, very long lasting. They're used in underground fuel storage, and so they do hold water for a long time. If you prefer a more environmentally sustainable material, uh, concrete is readily available. Um, Typically, oh, thank you, yes. Uh, so in this case, there's typically a very large hole that's required to put the tank in the ground. And um, one of the concerns with implementing a cistern is that the tank will be empty for large portions of the year. And, and essentially, you're creating kind of a recessed area that can accumulate groundwater um, with, in areas with poor soils. So after the first rain, if, if the tank isn't properly weighted down, it, it could float up very much like a submarine. And so it's, it's always a design constraint that you always have to keep in mind when you're burying big tanks to um, have an adequate subdrain or adequately weight the tanks down. But ultimately, the benefits of putting a cistern below ground, as you can see in the last slide on the bottom, um, there's not much intrusion onto the landscape. And that's tends to be a critical element. So one of the biggest concerns in storing water is, is vector control. So that can, um, all, all the items in the system should be screened, all the inlets should be screened off to protect from insects entering the system. Um, after the fact, chemicals can be used or ideally um, some sort of turbulence can be generated inside the tank with an aer aeration device to keep the, the, um, the water's not allowed to be calm. Part of the life cycle of the mosquito is, is to crawl out of its egg and it actually uses the egg as a raft for the first couple days or day. And um, if, you're, if you create turbulence, the mosquito falls off the raft and drowns. And so the vector control issue is addressed. Um, from the cistern to the end use, uh, some sort of treatment is always used. In this case, at this Santa Monica project, we used quite extensive treatment. We had various levels of physical filtration and disinfection because we were uh, using the water, we are using the water um, in, in a position where there's, there's a potential for human con contact. We're flushing toilets with the water. Um, so on other types of, of, of smaller scale projects or projects where there's subsurface irrigation, substantially less treatment is necessary. Um, it, it, it definitely affects the economics of, of the overall project. Um, and in, in every type of, almost every type of stormwater reuse system, there's a distribution element. Typically pumps are, are involved and that raises the potential issue of cross connect contamination of a cross connection with the potable water supply. So as um, it was mentioned earlier, any type of a gravity system would be approved on a, um, by the city of LA with no health department clearance. However, if, if, 
If you've got a pressurized system, which most do, you end up having to go to the health department and meet their requirements. With stormwater, one of the benefits is a reverse pressure principal device, this is a picture of an RP device, is authorized for use. With gray water, since gray water is technically wastewater, an RP device and a cross connection is, is not allowed in, in, in the various codes. So the only way for makeup water in that situation is with an air gap, and that's something that you're in, in undoubtedly will come across when implementing projects. So moves a little fast. Forgive me, I can get lost. Um, Makeup water is, is a critical element of any stormwater cistern here in Southern California because for all practical purposes, when you want the water, it, it doesn't rain. And so um, it's something that should be included in, in any design element. Otherwise, the, the reuse system doesn't really serve its full purpose. So an, an air gap is, is a very simple mechanism which pressurized city water can be introduced into the tank without running the risk of, of a cross connection. If there's any backup, the water overflows out and doesn't make it into the city pipe. And that applies to, to gray water equally so. So we've heard a little bit about drip irrigation. I'm a strong proponent for subsurface drip irrigation. It, it allows a lot of flexibility. Um, it, it is a little bit of a challenge from a design standpoint, but when reusing water, it it meets the requirements of the code very effectively. And there's a number of companies that make different products and it, um, it does have to be buried. If it's uh, treated black water, the subsurface drip line has to be buried 12 inches below grade, otherwise it's considered Title 22. With gray water or storm water, there's substantially more flexible, only two inches to three inches of cover is required and, and mulch counts as the cover. So. I think in um, this very complex regulatory environment that we're in, th there is a potential to implement a capture and reuse system relatively easily and, and meet all the various codes without having to overcomplicate things. And, and I think that's what our firm's expertise, well, I know that's what our firm's expertise is in. And I'm happy to answer anyone's questions with respect to stormwater reuse, gray water reuse, black water reuse. I would just like to make a plea that as a community of professionals, we stop using the word reuse in the same sentence as the word stormwater. Currently, it's not regulated as a wastewater, and we really wouldn't want it to be regulated as a wastewater, if at all possible. Technically, it's no different than any other surface water source, and therefore, why should it be regulated any differently? treat it to meet MCLs, if it's MCLs. So that's respectfully thanks. I, I agree unequivocally. Um, I'd like to thank the city of Santa Monica for encouraging me to even attempt to get a permit for the system. I, I didn't want to even try because the, the regulations are set up to prohibit reuse. They, they do encourage use in a responsible manner, so I, I agree wholeheartedly. It's the first time I heard that terminology was today, and, and it really struck a chord. So thank you.